All right, uh, we will get started today. Uh, today, uh, for today's lecture, while I was a little late, uh, I given you a lot of reading material, and I hope um, uh, that you have at least browsed to a lot of it. Now, the work that we have done in generally in the area of um, analyzing social media data, and mostly it's also real-time analysis of social media data, has spanned across uh, many uh, topic and uh, also across many um, uh, applications. So among the, uh, uh, there is an interesting story to how we got started with this work. Um, you might know, and if not, this is worth knowing that uh, Facebook started in 2005. It's only been 16 years. And Twitter started in 2008. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the first time, because Twitter has an API, uh, the social media started to become available. Uh, there was MySpace uh, even before Twitter, but it floundered because of um, uh, various uh, decisions that they made. So, um, uh, uh, what uh, uh, with the open available data uh, on 26th of November 2008. So this is like very early days of Twitter, really. Um, terrorists struck Mumbai, and there were uh, there were three days of uh, carnage. Uh, they struck nine different places. Uh, 182 people died, I think. Um, now uh, I came to US from uh, you know India in 1981, but clearly interested in what. You know, happens in the you know motherland. Uh, so um, it was interesting that uh, I would get all the latest news and information from Twitter, with uh, Flickr being also important uh, for image sharing in those days. And it became it, the power of the technology became very clear to me. So I said to my student then, his name is Karthik Gomadam, um, let's start collecting this data and let's see what we can do about it. And then that led to actually development of the Twitter system. I hope you already, all of you have looked at that page on Twitter system. Um, and the Twitter system um, uh, probably was the, and has been one of the most, or maybe most powerful um, social media analytics systems until recently. I don't know what has happened in the last two, three, four years, but until for sure 2015 and 16, uh, it had it, 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 functionally it was the most powerful system that at least I'm aware of, even though uh, I have a biased opinion. Um, and um, it, 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 you know, several of my PhD students, uh, sorry, several of my students, both PhD and masters and undergrads, uh, worked uh, on that project. Um, I believe that um, so in in 2015. We did intellectual property disclosure where with me there were uh, six, seven or eight of my students uh, that were uh, co-inventors of uh, the work, meaning all those guys had worked and contributed to the development of the technology. And um, in 2016, we license, I licensed that I, 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 a venture capital incubator came to us and, uh, and then I uh, worked with them to license the technology from the university, which technically holds the intellectual property and um, then uh, start the company. Uh, I had done earlier a couple of companies and I had ran them. I wasn't interested in running it myself. Uh, so we hired professional managers to run it. Um, and I think it was a great um, uh, uh, exercise in intellectual development uh, and, and in, in business development also, because three of my, so all those guys got, uh, you know, royalty payments uh, from the licensing. Uh, and I think there was a pretty decent amount that the university got from the company. Um, secondly, uh, three of my undergraduate students there became my uh, master students. And then all three uh, got hired. In fact, the company I found Founded the company only because I knew that the right people will be do the technology very well. So they the company, and they were the uh, early. Uh, hey, somebody's uh, talking, so please quiet. Um, 
so somebody um, uh, uh, so they became the key, uh, you know, engineer engineers for the company, and they remain so uh, now. Um, and the technology that was developed was a TRS technology readiness level of uh, 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 seven or eight. Uh, nine is the highest, meaning totally commercial, uh, you know, uh, technology. Uh, but eight is pretty high up, and um, the software we transfer was so good that hardly any change needed to be done in in, in commercial operations. The from a scientific perspective, it had very comprehensive capability. What I call a spatio temporal thematic people content network sentiment emotion intent real time analysis. So that's mouthful, but that's a very comprehensive uh, ability to understand uh, uh, the content in all different ways with all kind of uh, you know what happens where. Uh, at what time, who are the people involved, how they communicate with each other and collectively work, that is the network part, what is their, um, what are their emotional and sentiment and intention kind of a perspective on the content, how they react to that. And we, uh, you know, applied to many different um, uh, topics. Um, uh, the one of the most visible and successful topic was election prediction. So we, I predicted 2012 elections, where um, uh, uh, the media said that there will be a very strong, um, uh, you know, I guess uh, competition between uh, Obama and Romney. And um, I said it is not. Uh, I uh, and I, I tweeted. I you know gave my analysis saying out of the 10 swing state, nine are easily going for Obama, and the 10th was Virginia, which is going to be close, which was clo called the last. Um, uh, and the election, uh, you know, really was called, very, you know, by 11.20 p.m. On, on November 6th, I believe, of 2012. Now, um, uh, then we work, we predicted Brexit. And at the time we predicted Brexit, we had only founded the company uh, Cognovi Lab. So, uh, this is a way for company startup to prove, um, you know, it is good. And in fact, hedge company, hedge funds, and others were interested in that kind of technology because if they know how a particular thing like this would go, uh, how the referendum would go, they could probably bet on the currency exchanges, uh, uh, currency basically uh, movements. Uh, we work with a uh, uh, in, in little bit on um, uh, the Indian election, general election, two thousand fourteen. We predicted 2016 election. Uh, we would monitor in real time uh, the debates, the three debates, for example, they were there. We would do it. We have, you know, about 20 people sitting there, everybody looking at the thing, and we will monitor and in real time, uh, you know, give our interpretation of what's happening. On the election day at uh, one o'clock, I tweeted uh, that I don't see how Hillary will win Florida. Uh, and uh, I was right, uh, you know, the Florida went to uh, Trump and uh, many other things like that. And we also predicted a Senate election and so on and so forth. But then we applied to many other things. We applied to the Arab Springs. We applied it to Occupy Wall Street. If you guys remember, uh, we um, there were uh, KKK and Antifa, uh, you know, a thing in Dayton. So we worked with police uh, in monitoring Actually, we didn't because we wanted to be away from that, but we helped provide the technology to uh, see if there are any uh, hotspots or problems kind of stuff. Uh, we applied it for gang violence, uh, uh, you know, and, and many, many topics like that. We applied, and then we applied to issues like mental health, addiction, and, and gender violence and such. So today, while that's, you know, very broad topic, uh, um, a lot of lot of things that we could talk about. We'll we're going to take uh, the particular area of um, mental health and addiction and uh, share with you the kind what what goes behind in doing this kind of analysis uh, and where is the what is the role of big data processing and AI uh, technologies in this processing. Uh, you'll see the role of a knowledge graph or ontologies. You'll see the role of of course deep learning and NLP techniques and um, um, uh, and you'll see uh, why we are able to do this kind of analysis now. And the analysis being done is at a very massive scale. 
uh, we have five uh, sorry two billion tweets plus uh, uh, for from the COVID-19. So we limited the analysis during the COVID-19 time where there has been uh, you know schools closed, so there was isolation, um, businesses closed, so people lost job and money issues came. And uh, isolation leads to addiction and uh, other things um, and, and, and uh, mental health uh, problems and then addiction. So we wanted to have insights into this kind of topics. And uh, we are going to present this from a public health perspective. Uh, we will um, uh, we can also do this analysis on the individual health perspective. For example, we have a, a research and publications in the uh, in monitoring um, uh, you know, tweets by somebody over a period of time and, and predict reasonably well that, uh, uh, you know, the changes in their depress, uh, you know, level of depression, right? So, um, uh, uh, a lot of interesting thing can be done at even individual attacking uh, level. Of course, all this uh, thing has to be, you have to be careful. There are privacy issues. Uh, so, when you work, when we work with individual thing, we are uh, using it anonymized data. I mean, we're not, uh, you know, um, uh, um, recording uh, that individual person. Uh, we are only doing it for proving the scientific validity. Uh, there are privacy papers and work on privacy to say how uh, an individual can control what somebody else can do with their data or they cannot do with the data. So there are many other issues of that uh, that also need to be uh, worried about in this context. So with that, let me uh, pass it on to Vedant who works on this project. There are a number of other people who also work on the project and. Um, um, you know, I'll be, there's a lot more that, you know, you can ask questions on, feel free to ask the questions. I'll be happy to, uh, you know, indulge you on, on those things. All right. I'll share my screen. Can everybody see the screen? Can, can everybody yes. see my screen? Yes, yes. Well done. we can see your screen. Hello, everyone. Today I'll be uh, presenting the work done by AI Institute, which is psychedemic, measuring the spatiotemporal psychological impact of novel coronavirus with a social quality index using social media big data, deep learning algorithms, and knowledge infused language process. Now, with the total number of cases reaching close to 150 million, and that's crossing the mark of 3 million. COVID-19 is a once in a century event and which we can say is impacting the social well-being, health and economy quite significantly. Experts have been warning us about the significant impact of this pandemic on the mental health, addiction and gender-based violence issues in the society. So some of the tweet examples uh, which is talking about mental health, addiction, and domestic violence can be seen here. So the first one talks about uh, anxiety and depression. Second one again talks about depression. Then third one shows addiction. And the fourth one shows domestic violence. The work which I'll be presenting today discusses the analysis from March 2020 till July 2020, for which we have worked with over 4 billion tweet tweets exact, extracted using keywords related to COVID-19 and about 700K news articles related to COVID-19. Our approach involves extensive use of expert domain knowledge, deep learning algorithms, along with knowledge infused nat natural language processing. Now we'll go over different parts of technical approach one by one. First, we'll be talking about the pro process of enriching the lexicons using news articles and various medical knowledge graphs such as Dow DSM-5, and some other knowledge graphs such as DBpedia. First, let us understand the importance of using domain-specific knowledge graph, such as DSM-5 and DAO in the creation of lexicons. So DSM-5 is the fifth edition of Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental uh, Disorders, which is considered as a Bible for mental health patients by the psychiatrist. Uh, so this DSM-5 has various concepts related to over 20 mental health categories. Here in the slides, we can see different mental health categories under DSM-5, which are anxiety disorders, bipolar-related disorder, depressive disorders, addictive and substance use disorders, and so on. So there are over uh, 
21 uh, different uh, categories under this uh, DSM-5, which is shown in here in the slide. Another uh, domain-specific knowledge graph which we use is DAO, which is Drug Abuse and uh, Ontology. We have uh, used DAO, which contains interconnected set of uh, drug-focused and health-related concepts. And it, it does not only contains uh, medical terminologies, is it also contains slang terms, it also contains some commonly used terms related to mental health conditions. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see a snapshot of DAO, which uh, talks about cannabis and the different slang terms which is used related to cannabis. Now, first, the set of lexicons are obtained from Mental Health and Drug Abuse Knowledge Base, or MHDA Knowledge Base. This knowledge base consists of several mental health and drug abuse, uh, uh, dr drug abuse knowledge bases, such as PHQ-9, SNOMED CT, MESH terms, DSM-5, DAO, and several others. Further, these lexicons which we have are enriched using the entities from news articles, which are passed from domain-specific knowledge base. The main idea behind using these news entities is to keep the lexicon enriched with the terms which are currently being used in the context of mental health and drug abuse. So as I already told in the starting, these uh, news articles are extracted uh, in this COVID period. So extracting the entities from these news articles will give us, uh, uh, will enrich our lexicons with the entities which are being used in the context of mental health and drug abuse. Now here in this slide, we see concept clouds of different lexicon categories, depression, addiction, anxiety, financial, COVID-19, healthcare, and stay at home. So you can say uh, these are not all the, all the concepts present in each of these lexicon categories, but uh, a lot of them are presented here in the clouds. Moving on, uh, now we'll move on to discuss about the content enrichment block of our technical approach. In this content enrichment blog, so what we know is even after using keywords related to COVID-19, we had irrelevant noisy data. We used semantic filtering to remove the noise by finding the mapping between lexicons and tweets. Again, when, when I say lexicons here is the lexicons which we created in the last step. Further, we used OpenStreetMap uh, Open API, Geonyms Ontology to obtain data about different US states county, city, and their aliases. So these, uh, this information about different US states, county, city, and aliases is used to obtain location details of tweets from its location metadata. Further, moving on to the next block, which is head score calculation. Here, we employ the uses of uh, mental health subreddit, lexicons, and domain-specific knowledge base, such as DAO and DSM-5. For this block, the first step we do is we perform a topic and language modeling. To obtain the topics describing subreddits, we use Skipgram model to generate n-grams. Later, we train LDA over subreddits and a LDA over uh, bigrams of subreddits. So here, the first step which we perform is uh, extracting topic from uh, compound topic from subreddits. Later, the relevant topics are identified by employing the topic coherence measure. For language model, we train a word to work model over n-grams obtained from subreddits. Some of the topics uh, obtained, uh, some of the topics, compound topics identified after LDA are shown above. So these are not all the topics. These are some of the topics in uh, each of this mental health and uh, drug abuse category, addiction category. Moving on, uh, under head score calculation, there are two important parts of it. The first one is semantic proximity, which refers to the alignment of tweets with MHDA lexicon, which is mental health and drug abuse lexicon. So as shown here, uh, as shown here in the example, palpitations and social anxiety can be aligned with the concept of anxiety in MST. Now the second part of Fitzker calculation is semantic mapping, which employs the uses of train topic models and language model to match the compound topics from subreddit to those of the tweets. Here is a visual representation of hit score calculation. So here we can see that to calculate hit score, we give n-gram key phrases extracted from tweets. We give the subreddit LDA models and medical knowledge basis along with MSDA as input, uh, along with MSDA lexicon as input. To better understand, here is the equation of hit score. 
head score calculation. This equation of head score calculation consists of mainly three parts. First is to calculate semantic proximity between n-grams, uh, n-grams and concepts from lexicons. The second and third part is to calculate semantic uh, mapping between the compound topics extracted and concepts from the lexicon. Now, further, this uh, further this head score is normalized to obtain the index score for various lexicon categories. So here, the second equation, right under the equation of head score, we can see the equation to normalize head score. And that's the score uh, which uh, finally calculates the, which we call as uh, index score. Now, some of the tweet examples from the data set about each of these lexicon categories can be seen here. So for anxiety, for depression, for addiction, for uh, healthcare, for stay at home and for financial. Uh, how are we um, um, ensuring uh, the quality evaluation for each of these? So it's based on the hit score, Dr. Shet. No, no, quality evaluation. Uh, how do you know this? What, 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 is the, what is the precision recall for each of these things? Oh, uh, further, we have actually, uh, we have obtained 1,100 tweets per class annotated tweets from uh, different domain experts hmm. and we have used uh, we have tried to find the uh, matching between the uh, means our labels the labels from our model and what uh, annotations we have done and i have presented the accuracy there so okay. I, i'll come to that now finally coming to the last block of our approach which is training classifier so this classifier training process is uh, uh, process employs a past research work done by AI Institute. So I'll just go over brief about that research, which is done. The name of the paper is, let me tell you about your mental health, which was published at CIKM in 2018. The aim of the paper was to perform contextualized classification of Reddit posts to DSM-5 categories. On this slide, we can see the architecture of the published work. On the left-hand side, input to, on the left-hand side, input is the DSM-5 and DAO lexicon along with the embeddings of Reddit words, which are mapped to one of the, which are mapped to the, uh, which are mapped with one of the DSM-5 lexicon concept. Now further, correlation metrics of these words with themselves, DSM-5 categories with themselves and cross correlation between these words and DSM-5 categories are created. Now uh, we'll, we'll see in next slide, why are we doing this uh, correlation metrics and what is the importance of uh, using CEDO here, which is mentioned as semantic encoding and decoding optimization. So let's see what is CEDO. So the, the, cement, uh, the process of semantic encoding and decoding optimization is used to incorporate the domain knowledge obtained from DSM-5 into the classification process. By using CEDO, we, uh, we obtain a discriminative weight matrix, which is further used to module which is further used to modulate the word embeddings of Reddit posts based on the proximity of the words to DSM-5 category. Now let's see how we can, uh, how we obtain the weight matrix. Here, as we see on the left-hand side, we have a correlation matrix of words. On the right-hand side, we have a correlation matrix of DSM-5 category. Further, we try to learn a weight matrix W by utilizing the Sylvester equation. Now the Sylvester equation has been used in computer vision with the context of zero shot learning. So here our idea is to uh, employ zero shot learning while uh, training a model. Here, as we can see, we are utilizing three correlation metrics in the equation. So the equation, the solvable Sylv uh, Sylvester equation, which is given there, employs uses of three correlation metrics. The first is correlation of DSM-5 categories multiplied by W. Further, that is added to W multiplied by uh, correlation between words and then which is equals to one plus delta here delta is a regularization parameter multiplied to cross correlation uh, between category and words so finally the weight matrix which we'll be receiving uh, which we'll be obtaining will be of the size uh, 1200 uh, 12808 into 20 where 12808 are different words and 20 uh, 20 is the different dsm5 category 
such that for every word we have a vector uh, of length 20 which is associated and where each dimension of vector correspond to one dsm5 category a similar approach is used here while training classifier for covid 19 where we have replaced uh, words words from uh, reddit with those from tweets and dsm5 and uh, dow lexicon with msta lexicon here we obtain a word matrix so here after solving the sylvester equation we obtain a word matrix of uh, 19,562 into 3. So for each word, we have a weight vector of length 3, and each dimension in the vector correspond to one of the category of MSTA, which is depression, addiction, and anxiety. So here are some of the phrases from tweets, which are mapped to those DSM-5 categories. Uh, the, the first one is for depression, second one is for addiction, and third one is for anxiety. Further, in this slide, we have the results of train classifier. So we have train classifier for each of these categories. So for depression, we have best performing model as balanced random forest and balanced subsample random forest. And similarly, we have uh, for addiction and anxiety. For depression, we have uh, highest uh, precision recall as 92.32 and 92.43. For addiction, we have 91.64, 91.82. And for anxiety, we have 94.37 and 93.78. Moving on to uh, the, so moving on, here we have uh, model performance over human annotated unseen data. So we gave humans to annotate uh, some data which was not seen by our model. And over that, we have a uh, performance of 83.78 accuracy for depression for addiction we have 85.49 and for anxiety we have 84.4 as the accuracy of labels predicted by the model after uh, after completing the technical approach moving on to the next part so now we'll be talking about the ski analysis that is social quality index analysis for the first month of pandemic outbreak of covid-19 in this analysis we'll be addressing two important questions First is how is the quality of social life is affected during the pandemic and what are the factors affecting the social quality of the location? So for that, uh, social quality index or SQI, so we defined an empirical uh, social quality index called SQI that aggregates over different MSTA categories. Those are depression, anxiety, and addiction. Our analysis mainly focuses on the relative SQI between the states and how the SQI is changing over time. We have grouped several uh, several states together to obtain clusters uh, with similar pattern of change in SQI. For a four week time period, here as we can see for the clusters of state consisting of Indiana, New Hampshire, Ohio, Oregon, Washington, Wyoming are worsening over the period of time. So here, the darker the, darker the color of state, the better the social quality. So as we can see these states the color of these states are becoming lighter and lighter over the time period. Based on the pattern of change in SQI, we have put different groups of state in clusters. So the states such as Wisconsin, Rhode Island, Nevada, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, LA, Oklahoma shows a nonlinear pattern, whereas uh, which is the blue line, whereas the states such as Kansas, Indiana, Washington, Wyoming shows a linear decline in SQI, which is the green line. And interestingly, the states such as Illinois, New York, Maryland, Arizona, Massachusetts shows a linear improvement in SQI. So the interesting part is even when the number of cases were increasing and there was a big uh, outbreak of uh, cases and that there was an increase in the social quality of one cluster. So in further slides, we'll be discussing about different factors affecting these changes in SQI. For a cluster with improving SQI ranking, so we see here that we have volume of uh, tweets related with the uh, MSDA concepts for each week. Sort of for a cluster with improving SK ranking, we see that uh, those volumes of tweet have been decreases. That is about a total of 300K in first week decreases over time and which comes on to a <coughs> total of 155K in the last week. Similarly for a cluster, with declining SQI, we see the volume, volume, uh, volume with the MSDA concepts 
volume of tweets with MSDA concepts have been increasing. That is, it goes from 146K in the first week to uh, 303K in the last week. And for a cluster with nonlinear uh, SKI ranking, we uh, nonlinear SKI ranking, we see the fluctuation in volume of tweets for the second and third week. But whereas the first and uh, last week still shows high volume. Now, why? Uh, what are the factors which are affecting? So based on our analysis, we have seen that along, along with outbreak of pandemic in US, SK is also uh, affected by two important factors. External events referring to the policy decisions taken by the government and uh, unemployed. And the other one is coping process of the public. Now, among many uh, external factors, so here in this slide, we have uh, uh, presented external factors for each of the week for uh, two, uh, two different clusters. So among many external factors, the, event, the events that are finance related appear to impact SQI, specifically business and individual relief announcement, business closures and increase in unemployment have apparent effects, which are illustrated here with two state clusters that have U-shaped relative SQI pattern. So again, both of these clusters have a nonlinear pattern. The one starts with the worse and in it ends at worse. Another one starts at better and ends at better. So according to weekly increase uh, for the states of Florida, Georgia, Michigan, uh, Nevada, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia, the cluster five, delayed the course of businesses and announcement of stay at home and shelter in place order. And accordingly, the weekly increase in their unemployment rates were also delayed. We observe that uh, whenever the individuals and businesses are given financial relief, the SQI is better. So you can see for cluster four, week three, week, uh, week two and week three, for cluster five, week one. So whenever there is a business, business relief or individual relief given, SQI is better. Whereas whenever the unemployment increase is much more significant than the previous week, the SQI is worse. Further, a weak announcement of stay at home or shelter in place order is usually followed by a week with better SQI. These findings imply that the financial vectors, uh, financial factors such as employment and relief package have mainly the most effect in social quality of people and the specific government intervention have significant impact. So overall, the takeaway from, from our analysis was that Unemployment increase, financial reliefs, and various other business closures are the ones which uh, significantly affect the change in SPI. Further, we have tried to uh, mirror the hashtag contents with the coping mechanism of uh, people. So here, and for cluster seven, where uh, where we see a linear linear decline in SQI, uh, linear decline in the SQI. So for relatively bad week one is associated with terminology consistent with anger, such as Trump pandemic casts blame on the US president, while keep America great 2020 is a defensive reply. Now, corona, hashtag Corona uh, apocalypse is a recognition of threat for possible grave implication of the pandemic, and which is reflecting pa panic in the public. And over the weeks, we see for this particular cluster, an improvement in SQI, because of which we begin to see an emphasis on an adaptive or coping mechanism to the crisis, such as hydroxychloroquine appears to be a promising treatment, while quarantine life and lockdown becomes the new normal, which rationalizes uh, agrophobia. Hashtag light, lighted blue supports and motivates the essential healthcare workers who will help to overcome the threat. Now, to a similar pattern is also seen for a cluster with the declining SQI. So the relatively uh, good first week is associated with hashtag such as we will prevail and uh, families first to motivate and keep each other uh, supported during stay at home orders and lockdown. Hashtag lighted blue and hashtag tanker trucker shows uh, support to essential workers who are helping them survive in the state of pandemic, state of lockdown. And over the weeks here, we see a decline in the quality of SK, which shows emphasis on Hashtag hydroxychloroquine, which is similar to drug benzodiazepine, and that can be interpreted as people being dependent on sedatives. Hashtag stay at home and hashtag breaking shows how after being at home for longer time and with increase in unemployment and no remaining financial resources, there is a state of panic 
building up leading to rights to open up workspaces now we have extended the uh, earth analysis for first four weeks along with the so along with the research questions addressed for uh, first four weeks we want to see how our analysis from april to june aligns with that uh, that of our first four weeks so based on the pattern of change in sqi we have obtained four clusters two clusters with downtrend and two clusters with uptrend along with low high variance and standard deviation here we in this graph we can see the relative change in sqi for four clusters over the time period here uh, t1 refers to change from week 1 to week 2 where week 1 starts from april 12th and so on so we can see that uh, the positive change for clusters with uptrend and there is a negative change for clusters and downtrend now moving on to cluster 1 which is a, a cluster with downtrend and high standard variation we see that uh, we see that for cluster with downtrend there is a significant increase in the proportion of tweets related to msda lexicons over the time period which aligns with our analysis for first four weeks now moving on to external events for uh, for cluster 1 we can see that the external events related to financial issues such as closure of non essential businesses small businesses and high unemployment increase percentage shows a significant impact on the change in sqi we can also see that as the pandemic progresses and with an extension of stay at home spike in cases in deaths there is a domestic violence alarm announced in several state and which is again significantly impacting the sqi so along with the financial uh, related issues we also have domestic violence uh, alarm being announced in the final set of weeks in several states which is also affecting the sqi significantly further uh, aligning so further moving on to cluster 4 which is a uptrend cluster so we see that for a cluster with uptrend there is a decrease in proportion of tweets related to msda lexicons over the time period so again this uh, this uh, this analysis aligns with uh, what we saw in first four weeks for a cluster with linear uptrend now move, coming on to external events for cluster 4 here again we see that the external events related to the financial aid provided during covid 19 such as uh, cares act fund grants for businesses unemployment insurance for opening for uh, small and non essential businesses return to work bonus and so on impact the improvement of sqi over the time period now after and again as we see here this particular uh, uh, this particular takeaway aligns with what we have seen for this similar pattern cluster in the first four weeks further moving on based over analysis we also found that different age groups reacted to the pandemic differently so here we can see two expression graphs the one in the white on the left hand side shows expression by gen z and one in the black shown uh, black on the right hand side is shows about millennials so as we can see on graph on the left hand side gen z shows some signs of appreciating the lockdown as an amusing holiday listening to music uh, listening to music uh, reading books video gaming watching netflix shows discussing on what's trending on snapchat and instagram which can be seen by the hashtags what am i listening what am i reading money haste fortnite nintendo music and so on along with that means however not everything is good they are also affected by fake news they are also affected by drug abuse and relationship issues such as teenage pregnancy and abusive alcoholism in family and in in family on the other hand when we see expressions from millennials we see that millennials are worried worried about unemployment and the bear stock market presidential response and far right conspiracy theories indicating of adaptation appears as uh, keep america great 2020 one voice one stay safe and be the change so from this we can see that there is a significant distance where on one hand gen z are uh, reacting a bit irresponsibly to uh, or their response to 
the pandemic a bit irresponsible compared to that of uh, millennials who are quite worried now uh, with domestic violence with the increase in an extension of stay at home orders and uh, isolations domestic violence is a suspected behavior behavioral consequence school closures puts spouses and adolescents uh, girls at increased risk of different forms of abuse victims are unable to escape from an abusive family member and unemployed women face greater risk of domestic violence within covid-19 now using our knowledge knowledge based lexicon of uh, gender based violence we examine trends in gbv content over time so an increase in gbv content from march to april is possibly associated with school closure lockdown and rise in unemployment so here you can see a graph which shows uh, the trend of increase in gbv content gbv related tweets in us we also notice that uh, we also notice rise in activities related to covid-19 response such as mindfulness and meditations which are coincident with the hashtags used here in the example tweets which are stop domestic violence hashtag me too and sta- hashtag stay at home challenge external factors such as emotion sentiments are associated with uh, uh, hashtags such as lo- lockdown extended and anxiety which are likely to contribute to an in- anticipated rise in gbv you we use a uh, we employ usage of expectation maximization algorithm using which we predicted the change in frequency of gbv over the next few weeks from which we found out and later we also validated that there is a increase in uh, gbb frequency frequency so after april uh, the weeks after april 10th we used em algorithm to first predict and further we validated that there was a increase in gbb frequency so overall we see by the end of time period shown here we see that there is a 58% increase in the gbb tweets compared to the first week with that our analysis can be used to help policy makers to understand the correlation between policy choices and social and health impact it will also be useful for public health advisors to monitor and prepare for uh, substantial changes in mental health and addiction and further it can be used by social services to monitor domestic and gender violence thank you that's it from my side now if anybody has any questions i'll be happy to yeah yeah so let's uh, open up for questions and discussions so vedant i have a one question thanks thanks for the great presentations sharing your research mm-hmm. uh just from the application side how this the result which you have been showing how the results are communicated to the concerned member to the concerned people is this just like a dashboard or is there any other modality i mean is there any other way you you could think of how this results could be communicated so we are actually in process of uh, we are we are in the process of uh, creating a dashboard in which we can display the result and i guess that's going to be the most feasible way of sharing this result with anybody because that's that can be accessible and means a dashboard is the way i think uh, we'll be able to communicate these results with the required set of people okay concerned set of people okay and second questions so in your research do you see where you could so what my understanding again i am bit uh, early learner in this particular domain but my understanding is from the real time data perspective i mean you have a domain knowledge and those things that are there In my perspective my in my understanding is you have been extracting a twitter data analyzing those data so have, mm-hmm. have you come across in this specific particular domain have you come across as any any use cases where you see potential use case where you need uh, data from images or sensors to enhance the results i mean just to, just to would like to uh understand i mean just would like to get your insights your uh, understanding maybe any specific scenario where 
other external data could help you i mean i know that ex uh, knowledge and knowledge graph and those are the you have been using but any like a real time data i'm talking about so one of the challenges which we faced uh, during uh, completing an analysis or doing this analysis was to uh, predict gender so predicting gender of uh, the user of the tweet or just by the tweet is quite difficult so here we can employ the uh, image the twitter user images and we can employ that uh, visual data to help in extracting the uh, gender of that person that's one of the use case which i which i have found and that's challenging uh, without uh, image data Okay, thanks. Thanks, Vedant. You're welcome. Um, uh, how can we um, compare with baseline data? So, um, I think CDC has been doing so called household survey. Um, uh, Uri is also on the call. I think we should look up uh, uh, the household survey. And I don't know the granularity or anything um, along that line. I just found it now. But if you can, um, uh, uh, you know, just like in the mental health context, there were, um, uh, uh, you know, surveys done by government on the mental health by states. Uh, mm -hmm. Similarly, if there is a uh, mental health survey during COVID-19 and addiction, this one also includes prescription use, then it would be uh, nice if you can uh, see some sort of correlation or what kind of correlation that could be a very um, we, uh, you know, we, we don't, there are always issue whether social media is reflective of the real world and, uh, to any time we can, uh, you know, uh, show, uh, the survey base or traditional data collection and compare with, you know, compare with the traditional data collection will be great. Understood. We'll look that up. Doctor. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? So I'll stop screen sharing. Yeah, the copy, Christopher, the copy is already shared uh, uh, on the LinkedIn post. If you, the post about this uh, in the comment, you will see a link to this particular presentation. Okay. Um, so uh, in that case, let me uh, try and uh, turn the tables and ask you guys some question. So Fawad uh, Kirmani, if you can turn on your uh, you know video and uh, uh, give me a f very high level, uh, you know, share your understanding of what role did this. Um, um, DSM-5 play here. Fawad? Yeah, Professor. Yeah, so, so, so what do you think, what was the role of DSM-5 here? Uh, DSM-5? In the presentation. Okay, in the presentation. DSM, the mat that matrix which the calculation was happening for the DSM-5 and the other data set. So, yeah, there were a couple of data sets which were the Reddit and the Twitter data sets. No, uh, DSM-5 was not the data set. It was the source of knowledge. Oh, source of knowledge. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pinking, Ping Ping Kai, did you, uh, can you uh, turn on your video and uh, uh, did you uh, get a sense of what DAO does? Hello, Ping Ping. Sorry, sorry, I didn't have a camera. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. Uh, do you have a, a role of, uh, do you understand the role of uh, drug abuse ontology? Uh, no, actually, I don't understand the uh, role. 
because uh, my major is in computer vision. So uh, I, I know this work is about the uh, language processing. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's uh, a lot of, uh, how to say, a lot of knowledge for me is, uh, I don't know. I don't know a lot of knowledge or terminology in this research. Sorry to, I cannot uh, answer your question. Okay, all right, Nathan. Um, I had a question for Vedant about the presentation, mm -hmm. actually. So I, I understand that you were, you know, filtering input from subreddits and tweets using semantic filtering and um, using the hashtags and certain keywords to uh, include in like the data set that you use. But how exactly did you filter through uh, certain tweets that might have been longer or subreddit posts um, that might have not been uh, actually useful um, or irrelevant, even if they did contain some of the data that you might have used? OK, so uh, just to clarify one thing, I haven't really filtered subreddit or anything. Those subreddit data sets are some of the data sets which have been used for various research work related to mental health by AI Institute. So I've employed the, those data sets. Coming on to Twitter. So Twitter, initially we extract the Twitter data based on uh, keywords related to COVID-19. And further we employ semantic filtering using the MSTA lexicon. Considering your question that even if after filtering, there are some tweets which are irrelevant. So those tweets will uh, automatically fi gets filtered out when we uh, calculate the, in, uh, the hit scores. So once the hit scores are calculated, the tweets which doesn't have uh, relevant data, even, even if, there's, if that contains some of these relevant keywords or keywords from these uh, MSD lexicon, those will uh, automatically have low, low score low hit score. So that's that's how we'll be doing. This. Let me give you one example to explain this. Um, uh, so what happens is that on the Twitter API, you use keywords to uh, do the to filter the tweets of your interests. Um, uh, the standard API, I believe, allows for you to use up to 400 keywords to be to to tweet uh, from the streaming API. Um, now, um, most almost all the uh, systems that we are aware of uh, would use these keywords and look for the tweets of interest that um, has significant limitation let me explain it the following way there is a so we in in the um, drug abuse ontology uh, which is uh, you know um, uh, we, we, there is a drug called buprenorphine and buprenorphine is actually used to treat the drug addiction, but itself could have a, a problem. Now, um, for buprenorphine, uh, which is a generic uh, drug name, there is a um, brand name called Subutex and Suboxone. And because you're using the social media, people use uh, slangs like bup and bup to refer to the same thing. Now, suppose you uh, filter by buprenorphine, you're going to miss out on all the tweets that mention sub, subuxone, uh, 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 suboxone, subutex, uh, bup, and bup, right? Um, so actually, in one data analysis, uh, in, in one corpus that we actually collected, we found that for every one occurrence of buprenorphine, there were 29 occurrences of um, uh, the alternate terms. What, would, what tells you? That tells you that the recall of keyword-based strategy is 1 in 30, exceptionally poor, right? So this is the limitation of so many products that just use keyword-based filtering. In our case, what happened is that when we say filter for buprenorphine, the system will automatically add all the other terms that send for buprenorphine, right? And get it. 
<coughs> but this is this is going to deal with recall it can come at a cost of precision for example sub may actually be for subutex which is correct use in the context of buprenorphine but sub may be for a subcontractor in which in case that is not relevant so there needs to be additional uh, you know uh, uh, consideration so that we uh, throw away sub use for in the context of subcontract and keep the sub use in the context of subutex so these are the interesting thing this this thing is called semantic filtering the filtering based on <coughs> keyword is called syntactic filtering traditional syntactic filtering so nathan so just to uh, adding to the professor shade note so as uh, so twitter is basically is a json object is a complex json object and it has a key and value so for instance a simple simple kind of filtering could be for instance it should be let's say example is let's say a twitter a, a, a tweet which has let's say more than 10000 follower for instance so key key based filtering also possible i mean i'm just giving you a simple example where this is how you could process json tweet and second thing is what professor shade meant semantic filtering means you could extract the value of a key and then apply different me mechanics to to filter out those tweets Nathan, did I did, did the answer your questions? Professor Shade has. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, as you heard, um, uh, so the point here is that we try to keep this uh, uh, lecture at a reasonably high level. Uh, so even if you are really specializing different areas, uh, hopefully you get enough of the idea of what this is. Um, um, every everybody have different perspective. My perspective is that you should have very wide base, even though you are becoming very specialized in your research, and because that that can add you know a lot of work research work these days is collaborating, and that can help you uh, you know. Uh, collaborate in the future with other people okay um well it is 3 15 if there's no other questions then we can end here the next class